Right, good morning, welcome back. Okay, day 27 high boost to build. That's the unions for the oil pipes, for the oil cooler, so now I can plumb that up. I was waiting for something in the post. Anyway, now, before I get started on this video today, the first thing I have to do is address the last video. Honestly, thank you so much to all of you for your incredible response to the bike. I loved it. When they pulled that sheet off, I absolutely couldn't believe it. I was lost for words. And some of the rubbish that I was gibbering when I saw it, I thought that's why the music came in. I downed the volume on our speech and I just let the music say, honestly, I couldn't think of the right thing to say. I was completely speechless when I saw the bike because you obviously saw it being wrapped, you saw the graphics, you saw it being done on screen. I didn't see any of that before I actually saw the bike because all of the footage of the rap and so on was shot by the guys at Boss Dog. They gave me that footage and we blended it into the video. So the fact that you saw it being wrapped, then you saw the reveal, I didn't get that luxury. I saw it for the first time ever as that sheet came off and it just knocked me over, it really did. So thank you to all the guys at Boss Dog, thank you to Luca, to all of the rest of the air, to Paul, to Tom, to Lewis, and of course to Sky as well, the lovely young lady who did some work on it also. Thank you to all of you. You have absolutely changed that bike out of all proportion. You've taken it to another level. I put three years of my life, commitment, time and effort into building that bike to make a shape that I'm really, really happy with. And you've accentuated that, you've complemented it and you've made it look all the better. So thanks to everybody at Boss Dog for your incredible response to what I reached out for. I left it all to you, I said you create something and that was an incredible leap of faith to take your pride and joy, something you've created, hand it over to another artist and say, you do what you think is cool. And they do, and it absolutely knocks you over. So thank you to Boss Dog, thank you to everybody involved, it's absolutely amazing. And of course it goes without saying, thank you to all of you for your encouragement along the way. Never more so than in the last video. 500 response comments in the first 24 hours, 20,000 hits in the first 24 hours, absolutely insane, and our fastest growing video yet. So thank you all, everybody, so much. We're really enjoying it. I'm riding it around in the sunshine. Everywhere I park it up, I have to elbow my way back to it. People taking this photograph with phones. That is a true compliment to all the hard work. So thank you, everyone. Anyway, that's enough celebration. Let's get on with business, back to normal. Today, high booster build. Now, I want to do the front brake master cylinder. You've seen the state of the calipers, bearings, bushings, seals, the mess and dec decay that I find in everything I open has been almost numb, I'm getting used to it. But today, I'm hoping to find something a little bit cleaner and straightforward. I'm gonna pull that thing apart, have check the seals inside it, put a new set of seals in, reassemble it like all the calipers so it's ready for use. And then the last thing I'll have to do is the clutch master cylinder in the next video. But for today, front brake master cylinder, Suzuki Hayabusa. Let's get stuck in. Right, there we are, very straightforward little unit, a Nissan front brake master cylinder. Extremely ubiquitous, you'll find them on dozens and dozens of different bikes, especially Suzuki's, and very easy to fix and rebuild. It's nothing more than a piston that lives inside a cylinder, it's got a rubber seal around it, it pushes the fluid out the end when you pull the lever in and that applies the brakes. It is the simplest technology ever. And all I'm looking to do today, it doesn't matter whether this is in lovely condition or whether it's all crudded up with rust, it makes no difference. What I'm more interested in is internally where it's quite probably very clean in there, the rubber seal itself, the little tiny rubber seal that forces the fluid, that seal can simply wear. And as it wears through all the rubbing it does backs and forwards over the years, eventually the fluid itself can force itself past the seal. So if you've ever had that situation where you pull the brake lever in and hold it hard and the, the lever itself continues to sink in towards the bar but there's nothing floating out, there's no leaks anywhere, 
that's what's wrong. That little seal in there is warm and the fluid's leaking past it and that's simple to replace. There's a little kit here that's got all the new seals that I need and the spring in there as well because it's a spring loaded mechanism. So you put a fresh spring in there after 20 years with the neglect on this old girl. I think this is a worthy upgrade. So let's get it apart, see what state it's in inside to get the new internal speed. First, there's a little rubber dust boot to keep the water and corrosion off the circlet. Show you that. Right, there we are, that's the rubber boot out of the way. That's just to keep the weather out of it, and as you can see, it doesn't really do a good job of that, but there's no other way it can work. That is how they are. Um, you'll always get a little residue in there of aluminium corrosion and some rust as well because there's a steel circlip in there. The two react together and you get that cack in there, but it's not difficult to get out, and that actually isn't too bad at all. Circlip now, I just want to address this. Obviously, circlip pliers. Straight nose ones, get in there, pinch and lift it out. Because the problem comes, getting down there, getting into the holes, pinching that circlip so that it clears the room that it lives in, that's usually okay, that's fine. But it's when it's down in a recess and there's lots of crud in there that you've just done your best to get out, but there's still some left. Once that's collected down, it's pulling it out that's the problem. When you go to pull it out, very often they'll ping off the end of the circlip pliers. There are various circuit pliers out there, and I just want to show you, if I can, very quickly, this little close-up. This is the, the, the tip of these Weha circlip pliers. You can see that in the end of it, there's a tiny notch in the hardened end of the circlip plier. So when you lock that into the hole in the circlip, and you close it, that little tiny notch latches over the inside of the circlip, and then when you're pinching it, you can literally pull it out. Now, I'll do it with the new one, or with this one when I get it out, I'll show you. They're very secure. When that circlet's on there, it's very secure and in place. A couple of things good about that. One is it's not going to ping off and hit you in the face, and it's not also going to ping off and disappear into the next dimension like they always do. So it's a safer way to do it, and also it does help when you've got hold of it and you need to pull it out. You need to get a purchase on it. That little notch just helps you with it. So if you want a pair of these, I'll put a link to them in the description underneath. This is safely locked in. Right, there we are. One fully refurbished front brake master cylinder. How easy was that? One circlip, rip the guts out, put all the new guts in, nice and clean. New circlip, new boot, job done. Piece of cake. In real time doing that yourself without messing around and showing a camera, you would probably take 
half an hour over that. Very simple job indeed. Now I'm just going to loosely put this back on the bike and put the tops back on and put the hoses back on loosely because as I've said with all the other hydraulics, all the other brakes and the clutch, sleigh cylinders, anything else I've done, I'm not going to juice it up until the end of the project, obviously. So there we go. Let's stick all this back on the bike. We can wind it up for today. Lee. Right, there we are, that's it. Front brake master cylinder, tick, another little job done and closer to the fabrication. Now, obviously, if you're gonna do this sort of thing yourself, it might help you if you wanna use that, stick it in your save box, refer back to it later on. There's so much else you can do to make these kind of jobs easier for yourself. Even getting the kit out of the bag and laying it out on the table and having a look at it. Then when you pull the one out of the master cylinder, you'll see it's identical and it's so easy to put the new stuff back in. Everything is about cleanliness, take your time, put it back together and make sure if you're gonna plumb it all up and actually make it work, that's a whole other job entirely and take your time doing that as well. So a job like this should take you no longer than about half an hour and should save you an absolute fortune taking it to the dealer to do because it is literally only 20 quid for the parts. Jobs are good. So there we are, thanks for watching, take it easy, ride safe. I'll see you for the next one.